Hi, I'm Steve Spangler. You know, some of the activities in this episode are intended for you to try at home, and others are completely off limits. So, to tell you which ones you're allowed to try and which ones you can't, we're going to put a little note on the screen that says, try this at home. If you do try it at home, just let me say, you probably need some safety equipment. So, I always re recommend the Super Thermal Nuclear Warfare Gloves, because this will protect your hands at all times, and you'll notice that the, the aliens of the future only have four fingers. And you should always have good safety glasses. So always wear your safety glasses. And just in case the bomb was to go off, you should have ear protection as well. It also lets you stop hearing people say, don't try this at home. And then if all else fails, have a safety mask. If you do all those things, you can try most anything that we say that is okay for you to try at home. But please know that the lawyers say that you can only try the things that involve carnations, food coloring, milk, Elmer's glue, and paper clips. Everything else, off limits. Is that good? Knock yourself out. Like so many things around here, it all starts with a phone call. Anywhere from a Boy Scout troop to the Ellen Show could call, and in this case, the Colorado Rockies call. They wanted Steve to come do an event that teachers could bring their students to that would be somewhat educational, and then stick around and watch the baseball game afterwards. So they want me to team up with Kathy Saban, who's our meteorologist at Nine News, and together we're going to take some of the demos that we've done on TV and somehow play them at a big field like Coors Field. The original proposal was that they are going to take some uh, kids and get them down close to the dugout and Kathy and I would stand on the Colorado Rockies uh, dugout and just address these 200 kids. Within a week that went to, well maybe that's 2,000 and uh, now ticket sales are at almost 5,000. The kicker is they want some interactive activity that could happen in the stands that the people there watching could do at the same time that we're doing down in the field. So in essence I have to do a hands-on science experiment with however many people, let's just say 5,000 people. Uh, I don't know exactly what that's going to be just yet. Steve said that I needed to talk to Jeff to pull the whole team together to get a bunch of experiments together and go outside and try them out. It's kind of like a big play day for us. Alright, uh, so this is us over there. <laughs> um, we're going to have to, so solar bags are really tightly wound. Um, and as you open them up, it's kind of how, just kind of like a garbage bag. Nothing real special or anything like that about that. But we're going to want to make sure when we're on the field that they're going to be opened ahead of time. Since they are kind of folded upon themselves, we're going to want to um, pump a little air through them so that they get open and the pl plastic isn't folded on top of itself and stuff like that. So it's a really simple, really simple, you just get a little bit of air and then go ahead and push it through. And that will cause it to just kind of start to open up on itself. So we've been manufacturing these giant bags. It's nothing more than just a, a giant trash bag. It's 50 feet long, it's about three feet in diameter, holds a tremendous amount of air. The secret is it's made out of a very thin plastic and of course the color of the bag is black. So that black bag absorbs the heat from the sun. So as you run with it, you scoop up the air and then you tie it off and within seconds, you can already start to feel that air start to heat up and literally two, three minutes later, you start to see the buoyancy factor of that bag. It becomes almost like a solar sausage that floats up into the sky. It's a really, really cool way to be able to teach that hot air rises. We're doing good, we have a slight tear, but everything's all right. I think that uh, I do best when I get to rally the troops, uh, go grab a whole bunch of demos, 
and take them and start playing with them. Because it's only when we start playing with them that we know this is going to work or stumble over this one and we'll, we'll actually create something new out of it. So this play is really, really important. So here's what's happening. Uh, the liquid nitrogen is going inside the bottle. It's a pretty slow process because the liquid nitrogen wants to come out. So it's 320 degrees below zero. And the trick is just a nice slow pour to fill it up. So a slower, slow pour. Job, I can't see the bottom. It's okay. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. Doing fine. So it is that slow pour. So right now the liquid nitrogen is trying to turn into a gas. So it's 320 degrees and what is it, about 70 degrees out here. So there's a difference. The water in there is just uh, basically room temperature water. So I think you're good. Okay? All right, so that's out of the way. That can go down. So Steve, your goal is a so, third full. Yeah, third full. Put a line All right, on. so now everybody's going to show it. Okay, got it? Good. Twist it on. Seal Brian, just drop it in. Twist it hard. Good. So here's what we're trying to demonstrate. Liquid nitrogen, when it goes from a liquid into a gas, expands 700 times. And because it's in that plastic, you can actually see the energy that's released. And of course, it's important to point out, you don't try this at home. We're in a testing facility with emergency personnel right around the corner. Definitely a different difference in timing. So the company I work with is Nine News, and uh, being a big media company, they've got cool toys, and they said that we have use of the helicopter that day. So. Totally cool. Helicopter comes over, gets this aerial shot of all these kids doing science. Hard part is I got to figure out something for all the kids to do that the helicopter can see. So this little thing's not going to work. So that's why I'm thinking these big wind bags will play well. They're colorful and, and hopefully from the air you can see just the sea of science going on. Could be cool. So I think this is the solution for the interactive uh, activity with everybody in the stands or wind bags. I've been doing this for years and years and years. So it's a great big long bag. It's like a, a plastic sandwich bag. If you're at home, it's like a diaper genie refill. And uh, the object is how many breaths would it take to blow up this eight foot long bag. So you can see how kind of colorful they are. Here, you tie off one end like this. So hang on there. And then you're supposed to guess how many breaths it would take. And everybody you know, does it like this and then slide it down and see it would take you three, six, it'd take you like 15, 20 breaths to blow up the bag. So since it's weather and science day, uh, if you use Bernoulli's principle that says fast moving air creates this area of lower pressure, you can actually blow up the bag in one breath. So watch, you empty it out like this, here, hang on to the end here. All right, now go back a little ways, all right? So now watch, if you stretch it out like this, the secret is you gotta keep your mouth off the bag. If you open it up like this, see? And then you blow into the bag, this fast moving stream of air actually creates this area of lower pressure and the air around it goes into the bag. So watch. See that? Ta-da! It's good, huh? Oh, if you wanna do this at home and you don't have a colored bag like this sandwich bag, here's what you use is a, um, this is a diaper genie refill. So you know these things that you put um, diapers in, you know? So if you pull out a section of diaper genie, just make it as long as you want and cut it off. You can do the same exact thing. Just remembering, now it smells baby fresh, right? Just remembering that you gotta keep your mouth away from the bag and if you blow from far away, this fast moving air creates this area of lower pressure. Blow up the bag in a single breath. It's pretty cool. Now the hard part is meeting with the executives of the Colorado Rockies and to get them to sign off because they now have to see everything that we're going to do down in the field. So uh, I somehow have to sell them on the idea that uh, all these things are good. So 19th and Wazi, is that the chop house? Yes. We're going to go around the chop house and kind of work in there. For a day to be on time today should have been it. Let's, let's do it. If you guys want to do it, I want to do it. It's good. I'm ready to go. Caps. Ten caps for So, kids, who wants to learn about the properties of air? We do, we do. Bring some of your friends. I have none, have none. <laughs> I think this is going to be quite a wonderful event. Both of the Rockies and the Steve Spangler Science. <laughs> I 
I didn't expect any pushback at all with this one, and this is the one that I got the most notes on, the solar sausage, you know, that solar bag, so you, you run across the field. So before any of our team was allowed on the field, we had to go over the rules and regulations of being on the field. And as long as we're in the outfield, kind of running around, everything was okay. So after everybody got trained, they loved that idea of, uh, of the solar bags. And I think it's probably the best educational point that we have in the show, because teachers can really show their kids and use it as an illustration that hot air fills those, or those balloons fill with uh, air, the sun heats the air, and all of a sudden the kids should be able to see them rise right there during the program. So, Pretty cool science lesson at the same time. How much will you give me if I huck this at Jeff Solar Bag and nail it in the air? If you agree, don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. You just took a running start, threw it up. <laughs> oh, look at you. Take a little, little, little baby. Get up. Don't, oh, don't. What did you do? I, I, you tried just to step on it, didn't you? No. Yes. No, I had a hand on it. Video will show. Okay, new plan. I casually walk by Jeff's string, solar bag string, and just snip it. What do you think? If you agree, don't say anything. Silence is the same as complicity. What we're going to do is let Kathy talk and let some of this happen behind us at the same time so that we can talk to her. All right, let's go. We'll, uh, we'll talk about this outside, but let's uh, we'll get out of this stuff. So I'm working on the event and details are finally starting to come together and then I look over at Steve's office and he's on the phone with someone and as soon as he hangs up he lets us know that he's now going for a, world, a Guinness World Record on this event. So, just one more thing. <laughs> Of all the things we can control, the one thing I can't control, the weather. So they're saying possibility of rain or snow, so it could be one of these freak snowstorms in the spring. So uh, can't control it, just have to kind of work around it. And uh, our team will, will work hard to pull it off anyway. I just don't want kids cold out there in the, you know, in the, in the morning watching this. And, and uh, snow would be disastrous, so cross your fingers for snow. I want you to know the number that gives us the highest geyser. That's over 7,000 bags in under two minutes. This is going to be awesome. Can you do that again, Steve?